Hello everyone and welcome to another week of Livestreams Karawara Online. We hope you're enjoying what we put out each week and that God is really speaking to you and you are, are learning from the word that the different people are bringing each week. You can contact us anytime. We'd love to hear from you. Our email address is on the screen now, or you can contact us via our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. Let us know what God's saying to you through these messages and how we can be praying for you. Well, tonight's message is from Matt. He brings us a great word and encouragement out of the Psalms, how we are blessed to be a blessing. We hope it encourages you. So let's just pray together and then we can dig into to the word. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you once again that you, for your word, and that we have this wonderful gift, um, a direct message from you um, that can speak into our hearts and into our lives. And Lord, we pray that this evening, um, as I share that you will speak to us, that you will encourage us and challenge us and help us to, to follow where you are leading, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. So I don't know about you, but I really appreciated what Mel shared a few weeks ago through her worship singles when she sat and she was um, explained some of the story behind those songs and shared those songs um, with you. I've certainly had her latest, The Declaration on Repeat, um, a few times since then. So uh, just I want to say thank you uh, to Mel for that a few weeks ago. She had us digging into the Psalms. So we're going to be in the Psalms or in, in, in one Psalm again uh, this evening. But I will allay your fears right now that I am not going to sing. Um, to be honest with you, I have a bit of a, a love hate relationship with the Psalms. There are times where I really enjoy spending time in the Psalms. I remember a few years back where I decided I would take a Psalm a day in my quiet time and work through them. And it was a really rich time. It was a great time, a time of growth. Yet there's also been times where, again, a few years ago, I challenged myself to read the whole Bible um, in a year from cover to cover, and I really enjoyed going through the lore and going through uh, the history and going through the narratives of, of all of that, the history of Israel. Uh, got to the wisdom section of the, the Bible, struggled my way through Job, and the Psalms defeated me. Day after day, do, trying to do three or four of these poems or these songs, I, yeah, it was just... For me, it didn't, didn't work at that time. So I've, I've had a bit of a, over, over my, my Christian walk, I've had a bit of the, this love-hate relationship with them. But the psalm that I want us to look at tonight is one that for the last, well, for a few years, to be honest with you, has been a real challenge, but also a real encouragement to me. But it really significantly in the last eight months. It's kind of been in my mind and I've been mulling it over. So if we can get Psalm 67 on the screen, Brian, what I'd love to do is actually, can we from the screen read this together? So, may God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us so that your may ways may be known on earth your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Now, the astute amongst you may realize why this psalm has been on my mind for the last eight or so months. It was about that time ago, end of March, beginning of April this year, that the song, The Blessing, 
um, was released and became kind of a viral sensation among Christians online. And the blessing is based on numbers 6, 24, and 25, which actually this psalm is also based on. So the priestly blessing in Numbers 6 has three clear aspects to it. The first, in verse 24, is protection from God. The Lord bless you and keep you. It's it's praying that God, or saying as the priest gave the blessing, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's protection upon you. The second, in verse 25, is the fav- is favor and grace from God. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the third, in verse 26, is all about God's peace. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. So that is the basis of the priestly psalm in number six. So the psalmist who wrote Psalm 67 used this as his foundation as he wrote the psalm. So if we look at verse one of Psalm 67, you can see the similarities in the words that he uses. Gracious, bless, making his, as in God's face, shine upon you. And Therefore, we can see how in this psalm, the psalmist picks up those themes of protection, of favor and and blessing, and of peace. Crucially, however, there's a significant difference between what happened in the priestly blessing in number six and the psalmist's expression in Psalm 67. Whereas the numbers blessing was something that the priest would have given over the congregation. In Psalm 67, there's the change from you to us. This is something that the congregation says together upon one another. May God be gracious to us. May God bless us and make his face shine upon us. This is a prayer of the people asking for God's protection, God's favor, and God's peace upon themselves. And this is good. It's good. They're great things for us to pray about. But unlike number six, which kind of stops there, Psalm 67 doesn't. Psalm 67 takes to heart the biblical principle that we are blessed to be a blessing. For verse 2 starts with the word, so. The psalmist then expresses the outworking of the blessing. So that the whole earth may know the ways of God and the salvation of God. Now we need to get our heads around what the psalmist is and isn't saying here. It's not simply a case of verse 1, God saying, or the psalmist saying, Lord, bless us, and then all the nations of the earth will see how blessed we are, be jealous of us, and come to know you. That's not what is being said here at all. What is being said is, Lord, bless us, so that out of our abundant blessing, we can go and bless others, that we can take to the ends of the earth the blessing of God, so that we can take the knowledge of salvation across the world, so that we can introduce everybody to a life and a relationship with Jesus. With this in mind then, what the psalmist goes on to to declare next is, is huge. With quick, very quick history lesson for you. The temple in Jerusalem had a number of courts, a number of areas that different people were allowed to go into um, at different, well, according to who they are and where they were born and all that kind of thing. In the very center was the Holy of Holies that only the Jews were allowed around. And actually, archaeologists have found a stone 
in the temple area that has this inscription written on it. No foreigner is to go beyond the balustrade in the plaza of the temple zone. Whoever is caught doing so will have himself to blame for his death, which will surely follow. Foreigners had a limit. They were not allowed to go any further than the zone, the area, the court that they were told was the court for them. This was and is, well, yeah, is still the Jewish law. Foreigners, to some respects, are kept at arm's length. So then in verse 3 of the psalm, it's got massive, massive implications. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. That all in the second half of the verse is so significant. Did the psalmist really think that everyone on earth would learn Hebrew? I don't know, but I do know he would have known the story in Genesis 11, when God created different languages. For all people to praise God would have meant that either, yes, the whole world had to learn Hebrew, which is ridiculous in many ways. I know we try and get everyone to learn English today, but it is ridiculous to think that the whole world would learn one language. Or, in the psalmist's mind, they would have expressions of worship from their own culture and from their own language. Now, I'm not saying that the psalmist had come to that conclusion and had thought through the full implications of the song that he had written, but picture the scene you as a foreigner are in that outer court of the temple with that sign in front of you saying, if you go beyond this point, you will die and it will be your fault. And then the music starts. The music of Psalm 67. What an awesome experience that would be to hear all those voices in the temple sing together about all people praising God. Verse 4 is then the center of the psalm. And as we'll see in a moment, verse 5 kind of mirrors and echoes the sentiment of verse 3. And verses 6 and 7 echo and uh, repeat the sentiment of verses 1 and 2. So verse 4 stands alone. This is the crux of the psalm. And what's the topic of verse 4? God. The verse starts with the hope that the nations will come together as one and sing for joy. Who are they singing to? They're singing to God. And that is what, where the psalm shifts to, the focus of this part of the psalm. The God who rules with fairness and has a real care and concern for his people. We need to remember that this psalm was written a long time before the coming of Jesus. But we, with a New Testament perspective, can understand this verse more fully. God is king and judge of the world. He's the one who draws up the standard of holiness that he expects his people to live by. Yet through his grace and through the sacrifice of Jesus, he rules fairly. He offers salvation to us all. Because of the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross, God has made a way for all people, every single one, to be judged right, even though we all fall short of the glory of God. He will judge the world according to his high standard, yet he has made a way for all people to be gifted righteousness and therefore judged accordingly. And it's not just the gift of righteousness that we can know through Jesus, but it's also that guidance that verse 4 talks about as well. Jesus himself declared, I am the good shepherd. And as Psalm 23, that famous psalm, talks about the good shepherd leading his people to green pastures and besides still waters. It's this God, the God who cares 
the God who has concern, the God who guides his people, but will judge them too, is the one that the psalmist calls us to worship. Well, when we picture God in that way, what should our reaction be? Praise and worship. And that's exactly where the psalmist goes on to next. He repeats the call of verse 3 in verse 5, saying that all the world, everyone in it, should come and praise God because of his grace and favor. Just as verse 3, as I said a moment ago, mirrors, sorry, verse 5 mirrors verse 3, so do verses 6 and 7 mirror verses 1 and 2. And though the sentiment of those verses is repeated as well. We are blessed to be a blessing. In verse 6, the psalmist returns home in terms of land and harvest. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. The psalmist is able to see and know that all blessings come from God. When the land yields a good crop, when the harvest is plentiful, then this is a blessing from God. We here in Karawara may not be quite as concerned about the size of the crop harvest as people that the psalmist was, was writing to in that, that agricultural uh, community, or even some of the communities here in, in rural Australia that who are, are so concerned about the size of crops. But yet even in our lives, we can know God's blessing, whether it's through job opportunities or relationships, or whether it's through good health and healing, or in many, many, many more ways. When the land yields its harvest, God is at work. And equally, when we experience blessings in our lives, God is at work. So what must we do when we experience blessing? Well, as verse 7 reminds us, we must share it. May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. The blessing comes so that we will be a blessing to others. We're blessed to be a blessing. As the priest did in number six, it's good to bless one another. But that is not where a blessing should end. Number six has a bit of a connotation about it of blessing one another and living in that blessing. But Psalm 67 takes that to the next level. Yes, we should bless one another. We should pray for blessing upon ourselves. We should pray that we experience the blessing of God so that we can take it out, pass it on, and let the whole earth hear of Jesus. But not just hear of him. Come to a loving relationship with him themselves. And in a moment or two, we are going to finish our service together this afternoon by watching a video. And once that video has finished, feel free to continue sitting where you are, praying through. There will be some chairs in the corner over there. If you want someone to pray with you, then head over there and there will be people available to pray with you. If at the end of the video you're comfortable um, with, with just watching the video and, and finishing, then go and get yourself some refreshments and do so in a COVID-safe way and remembering that we are, are still under those guidelines. But before we have our fellowship and our drinks together, um, let's watch this video based on Psalm 67. As you watch it, Pray for God's blessing to come on you. Then take the time to pray for one another in this room. Pray that God's blessing will come on one another in this room. Pray for those who join us online. Pray for God's blessing on them. 
But don't stop there. Then pray for the ends of the earth. Pray that the Jews, the Gentiles, the Hindus, Muslims, Buddhists, atheists, everyone will have their eyes and their hearts open to seeing not only who Jesus is, to seeing not only what he has done for them, but to come to know him themselves as their saviour and Lord. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine and make his face shine and make his face shine upon us that your ways may be known your salvation among the nations that your ways may be known your salvation among the nations shine shine
God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face and make his face and make his face This is Psalm 67 May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us. That your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you rule the peoples justly. And to guide the nations of things. May the peoples praise you, O God. May the peoples praise you. May the peoples praise you.